I'm stressed. I'm so stressed. Oh my gosh, the kids are stressing me out. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to my channel. This is Miss Lauren Lee 11 and today I'm going to be discussing with you the five reasons why your hair may be thinning and how we can fix this. But guys, watch all the way to the end because I have a number six bonus reason and solution. Now, I'm a person that likes to usually talk about my experiences rather than just reading upon it and kind of regurgitating the information that I've read. So these are my personal experiences and I'm going to tell you the ways in which I've managed to fix them. So anyway guys, I'm just going to jump straight into this and I'm just going to give you the five reasons why your hair may be thinning. Guys, so first reason why I noticed my hair was thinning was stress. I think just being a mum and trying to balance work and trying to balance, you know, the school run, the usual house duties, then conversing with my hubby when he gets home. And, <laughs> and that's not stressful, but it's a lot. My day consists, my one day consists of a lot. So, you know, the stress levels do tend to build up and I've got to figure out ways of how to, you know, reduce those stress levels. If you didn't know guys, stress does actually thin your hair. It can actually make your hair fall out. It's so important. The way we think eventually starts to manifest physically. So, you know, if we keep convincing ourselves that we're ill or we're annoyed or we're stressed, it will then start to manifest physically. And that's what happened with me. My stress levels were quite high and, you know, everybody kept on saying, oh, how are you doing? How are you today? Blah, blah, blah. My answer was always, I'm stressed. I'm so stressed. Oh my gosh, the kids are stressing me out. <laughs> yeah, so I got even more stressed and my hair started thinning. Um, the thinning patches that I noticed were mainly in the back hair and parts of the front hair. So you could see more of my scalp. My solution for that now, guys, I'm st I've still got a stressful life, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but my solution for that now is to basically meditate. That very moment where I'm feeling stressed, for instance, if I'm out shopping and the kids are getting on my nerves, and I can't necessarily stand there and just meditate, I breathe. Breathing works all the time. Now, I'm not just talking about breathing as I'm struggling to do right now. <laughs> I'm talking about deep breaths. So I'll take five deep breaths in from my nose out from my mouth <laughs> and usually that calms me down so that's my solution to breathe in that very moment and ways for long-term effects to reduce my stress levels which you can also do as I said is meditate okay so number two another reason why your hair may be thinning is the same routine now it's good to have a routine guys don't get me wrong but the way we handle our hair, if we're doing something to our hair consistently in a set period, then over time you will start to notice thinning. Let me give you an example. Um, if you wear your hair in a certain hairstyle, i.e. as you can see my bun is very loose, but if I was to wear my hair like this every day and in a very, you know, sleek bun, eventually I will start to see traction alopecia. Traction alopecia is where your hair is pulled to an extreme, as to where your hair then starts to thin and, you know, your edges start to recede. I haven't necessarily experienced traction alopecia in that sense, but what I was doing, if you've watched many of my wash and go videos, I usually part my hair in the same subsection. So I'll part down the middle and then part down the sides. The sides are fine, it's usually the middle part that I have an issue with because the back of my hair is a lot thinner. I've got thicker, denser hair at the front. The back of my hair is a lot thinner, whereas where I keep parting it down the middle, you know, and constantly styling this side and styling that side, the middle of my hair started to thin again. That was added stress, not obviously mental stress, but that was physical stress on my hair. And I've done my hair like this for as long as I can remember. So every time I do a wash and go, I always do my hair in that way. And I have now noticed that from the very roots, my hair has started to thin out. I can see more scalp. The solution to that is maybe try changing it up from time to time. So instead of, you know, if you're gonna do a wash and go, what I do now, instead of doing my four sections, what I now do is I just part straight across and I do my wash and go. I style that part going down and I try not to split it into two. I literally just pull the whole hair to the side and just style it with the styler. <laughs> yeah, so it's less stress on that area of my hair and that helps immensely okay with the front of my hair also um 
as I said, it was thin, but not too much. But I do know it's because that's how I wear my hair once my wash and go is done. So what I've been doing with that, I've been using Jamaican black castor oil. I have noticed a difference, but obviously things do take time, guys. It's not going to happen overnight. But I have noticed a difference. I have noticed some thickening and less scalp being visible. But I do have fine hair. It's not something that I'm too worried about at the moment. Okay, so the third reason why your hair may be thinning products that you're using you know when you find your holy grail and it's been working for months and then one wash day you decide to do your hair and nothing is working for your hair it's just not going the same way it's time to change up your products guys and this doesn't necessarily mean the product itself is going to thin your hair but the fact that your hair is now reacting adversely to these products can then lead to breakage and can also lead to thinning of your hair if that makes sense so what I would say is change up your products from time to time. You've got to literally listen to your hair. The same way you'd listen to your body, and therefore listen to your hair. So for instance, I'll give you a prime example. I was using an amazing deep conditioner close to a year straight, amazing to my hair. After time, my hair was no longer soft, it was brittle, and this product had no proteins in it, no sulfates, no parabens, no all the above. It was literally just it had stopped working for my hair and the reason being guys is because it can no longer do what it needs to do for my hair my hair basically taking all it needs from this product so I had to find something else to then switch it up that is why guys because your hair has had enough of that type of product for a while and you need to lay off that product and maybe try something else but that doesn't mean then go and use a different product every week because again you can get the same adverse effect guys try and see figure out what your hair likes stick with that for a while and then if you notice any changes negative changes in your hair switch it up a little maybe keep some products that you usually use in your routine and maybe take away some okay so that's number three so now number four guys it's kind of three things in one it's hormonal changes diet and if you're unaware medication can have a dramatic effect on your hair obviously with anything taken i.e medication you do get side effects some of them do cause hair thinning or hair loss i know somebody who had a thyroid issue she was taking thyroid medication this actually then thinned her hair not only thinned her hair but caused her hair to break in different parts what we put into our body highly affects how our hair develops and grows also hormonal changes I notice when it comes closer to my cycle, my hair tends to get <laughs> slightly greasier. But if you don't have curly natural hair and your hair is straighter, you will find that your hair will become more greasy if those are part of your, you know, changes during your monthly cycle. And then the last one, as I said, is diet. Now, recently, I haven't been eating as I should do. It has made a difference to my hair and not in a good way. When I start to feel like how I'm feeling now, like quite sick, I usually just go straight to the greens, to the salads, to, you know, the smoothies, and I haven't been doing that. Because I've been feeling so, like, groggy and stuff, I've just gone to the bad stuff. The fast foods, the carbs, everything. My hair isn't strong and resilient. It hasn't been for the last couple of weeks. I noticed that when I have greens on my salads and I'm constantly having them, my hair gets stronger, it grows super quick. Literally, guys, greens are superfoods, they really are. It is growing, obviously, hair does grow. Um, I am retaining length, but it's just growing slower than usual. I know for a fact, if I was to eat salads or incorporate more salads and greens into my diet in the next two weeks, my hair will be flourishing like crazy. So in that case, the solution would then be to keep an eye on your diet, guys. Number five, guys, this is one that I haven't done in a while because it is so cold right now, and this is swimming. Now, as you know, guys, we swim in chlorine. Chlorine is bleach. Bleach in your hair weakens your hair, especially over time. Now, I used to go swimming every Sunday, and I noticed that my hair, and even as a child, I remember my dad always used to say to me, it's the chlorine in my hair from swimming cut my hair out I never understood what he meant didn't really care I just had so much hair anyway I was just thinking yeah it'd be nice to have a haircut but I didn't understand what he meant now I understand it literally weakens your hair till your hair actually snaps so what I would say in this point guys if you do go swimming and you don't want to stop swimming that's fine obviously use your swimming cap <laughs> so what I tend to do or used to do whilst I was swimming was do 
regular protein treatments and deep condition. If you used to do anything chemically to your hair, i.e. diet, bleach it, you need to strengthen your hair. So you would need to do a protein treatment after swimming. Um, I'd say if you don't do protein treatments, try protein treatments once a month and deep condition your hair after the protein treatment. Deep condition your hair maybe twice a week. So here is the bonus reason. This is something I used to do. I hate doing it now. And this is why I set a routine for myself. Going to bed with wet hair. What I used to do when I used to do my wash and goes, I used to wash my hair on a Saturday evening, go to bed with styled wet hair. And because my hair was wet, I wouldn't put it up in a pineapple. It would just mess up the whole style. Sometimes to keep the moisture in, I would also sleep with a shower cap on and then my bonnet on, just to obviously keep my hair moisturized overnight. But doing this over time, guys, created a lot of itching in my scalp. Now, the reason being is it creates a hospitable environment for bacteria. So, you know, if fungal infections, what have you, you cre I didn't have a fungal infection, by the way. I'm just letting you know. I suppose it was the start of because I had very itchy scalp. Now, bacteria enjoys warm, dark and damp environments. So that's what you're creating with your hair. Over time, your scalp, as I said, will become itchy. You'll start to itch it and damage the follicles at your roots. So when you damage the follicles, you will start to see thinning in those areas. So please, guys, don't do what I did. Don't do it. <laughs> I actually followed a routine. I won't say whose channel it was, but I, will, I actually followed a routine once. And I saw, I did see progress because my hair was being constantly moisturized at night. But the downside, as I said, was the fact that it created an itchy scalp. Downside outweighed the benefits basically, so it wasn't for me. So what I now do guys, is I wash my hair on Sunday mornings and I li just leave it to air dry. I literally just leave it to air dry throughout the whole day and usually by the evenings I'll have one patch at the back of my head that's not completely dry. But to then overcome this, what I do is I just put my hair up in a pineapple from them because the majority of my hair is dry, it will be fine in a pineapple just very loose pineapple. So if you do want to wash your hair in the evening and you want to carry on washing your hair in the evenings, what I may suggest is once you've washed your hair, let it air dry for, or you can diffuse air dry, I should say, for 30 minutes. And then once your hair, you know, the main parts of your hair, even if your roots aren't completely dry, as long as the main parts like this part is dry enough, it's okay to put it up into a bun so it's the majority of the, your hair is away from your scalp, if that makes sense. So therefore you have less risk of creating a hospitable environment for bacteria. Okay guys, so that is your bonus reason number six. I hope you enjoyed this video. I post every week, Mondays, Thursdays and Saturdays. All right guys, I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you in the next one. All right, bye.